Hello again everyone in this technical analysis of the stock market video. I call the video bearish engulfing because that's what we see on a pretty dramatic weekly candle here on one of the charts that we're about to talk about. We're going to start off talking about the NASDAQ. We're going to look at the NASDAQ composite on a daily and weekly basis. We're going to look at the VIX and see how the follow through happened from last week's uh, uh, turn signal that we had in, in terms of the uh, the candlestick pattern that showed up there. We're going to take a look at the Shanghai Composite, which had a big drop on Friday. Check in with the Dow Transports, and then finally with the Baltic Dry Index. All right, let's get started here with the NASDAQ Composite. It was down 13.32 on Friday. You can see we've had, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five days in a row to the downside, it looks like here. Uh, what I'm doing here, this is the Elliott Wave pattern I've got. I'm still holding this bearish pattern. Uh, I still believe that in terms of this Wave 2, that we've got a 3, 3, 5 wave structure going on. So what I'm talking about is the detail in here in terms of 3, a 3 wave, and then a 5 wave move to the upside here. It fits an expanded flat that we've got for a corrective wave two. Now, how far is wave two corrected as a percent of wave one? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing, you know, the distance of wave one and how far we corrected back into that. And the retracement level right now, the high that occurred on, I think, what is that, Monday? Yeah, Monday. The high was almost exactly 61.8% retracement of wave one. Now that's typically what you're looking for in a wave two. You're looking for a deep 50 to 61.8 percent type of retracement. Now there is no rule. It's just that's kind of a guideline that you're looking for. So that's what we've got here on the pattern. So somebody would say, well, you know, there's people who are talking about bullish perspectives and bullish counts, etc. I understand there are bullish alternatives to this count, but this count hasn't been invalidated yet. Well, where do I think this count becomes very weak? And you got to sit back and say, where is it being damaged severely? If we reverse or if we continue to go lower and then come back up, we take out Monday's high. Then to me, if we continue to push higher above Monday's high, then you've really got to, you know, call into question what's happening with this scenario. OK, there are other scenarios that we've got for all of the indices. But right now, this bearish scenario is still holding. All right. I want to take a look at the uh, more traditional, the moving average perspective and what we had in here. I, I carved out this resistance zone in here between the bear rallies that we had October into December. And so I created this resistance zone. It's a lot wider than what happened on the S&P 500, but we still came right up into it, a couple of thrusts, and then we got repulsed right back down out of it. Now we've had three consecutive closes below that 10-day moving average. The blue line is my 10 exponential moving average. Okay, you can see the code up here. The red's the 55, the blue gray is the 21. So that is what we've got. It looks like it's about to roll over. We're just not quite there yet. And then if you come over and take a look at the weekly chart, pretty dramatic perspective, that is a huge bearish engulfing candle. It literally engulfed. Okay, so we gapped up from the previous week close. We gapped up at the opening on Monday, couldn't go anywhere reverse back down and literally close below the entire trading of the last two weeks. Pretty uh, pretty bearish look. The other thing that's very obvious that we're seeing here is the way the 21 has crossed below the 55 on a weekly chart. Okay, That's also um, a pretty significant tell. And um, there's, there's uh, some track record uh, behind that too, especially, especially after we got a confirmed 20% drop that occurred in December, okay? Then we follow that 20% drop with this moving average cross. Uh, that, in my mind, just confirms the picture that we've got going on. All right, let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, here's what the VIX did this week. On Friday, it was actually down after swinging up. Got a little bit of a reversal candle here. Moving average-wise, we got that 10 crossing above the 21 for the first time in quite a while, actually. Uh, the last time the 10 was above the 21 was back at the beginning of January. 
and uh, we crossed, had it crossed to the upside here at the beginning of December prior to that big December sell-off that occurred. So we're watching this pretty close. Last week I talked about uh, this candle in here, this uh, inverse hammer that we had, basically the reverse tell for uh, that we had at the top up here. This reversal candle became an inverse hammer, and we sure enough got the follow through. What I would have liked to have seen, we actually, before I go into that, we actually broke the high of the previous four trading weeks, okay, the range of the last four week, weeks. We broke that high this week. I would have liked to have seen this close above the highs of the last two weeks and above the 10-week moving average, but it's still a fairly bullish move following on that uh, previous week uh, candlestick pattern. So that's what we've got for the VIX. Uh, let's see what I want to look at. I want to look at the Shanghai Composite next. What a move by the Shanghai Composite. This has had a heck of a run here in January, more dramatic even than you know what's happened here in the United States. But look what happened on Friday. It dropped 4.4% on Friday alone. And it's interesting, what am I measuring here? I'm measuring wave two as uh, compared to wave one, and we've retraced just a little bit over 61.8% of wave one and so we got the deep retracement what do we have here we have a abc flat uh elliott wave pattern now this c wave has actually gone a lot deeper than i would have thought it would uh, but there's no rule that says it has to stop at a specific place uh, in here so that's the pattern let's just take a quick look at the weekly chart and see what's going on when you look at the weekly view you can see this long-term trend line that this week it went up to and basically got repulsed back on down. So we've got a nice little nice reversal candle here uh, for the week. And it's going to be interesting. Again, whenever you see a reversal candle, uh, it's an indication, but you need follow through. You need continued selling to confirm this picture. OK, uh, so that's the picture on the Shanghai Composite. Let's take a look at the Dow Transports. Dow Transports have been pretty negative. As a matter of fact, they, they have actually put in 11 consecutive days down, okay? And the last time that happened was 1972, okay? So 47 years ago is the last time that we got 11 consecutive days to the downside in here. Now, this hasn't been a super strong move, but it's very similar. We got a moving average across the downside. Are we getting a rollover like up here at the top back in September? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we've got this rising wedge. Typically, when you break down out of a rising wedge, typically you do it fairly quickly, and typically it retraces all the way down to the beginning of that wedge. Uh, so we'll see whether or not we get that. And the other thing I'm thinking about is this leading the Dow to the downside. You know, uh, the Dow has been a little bit uh, weak, a lot weaker actually. We don't have a moving average cross yet on the Dow Industrials. Uh, but we'll watch and see whether that still uh, materializes. So this is pretty interesting activity. You know, and again, the Dow Transports, what are the, you know, logistics, the globalization? We've had uh, weak announcements about um, things that are going on with FedEx, UPS, uh, the airlines, and, uh, you know, just on and on. So when you think about all the companies that are moving the goods around the world, uh, they, they are the ones right here in the Dow Transports. And speaking of which, let's look at the Baltic Dry Index. Okay, the Baltic Dry Index is uh, published, I think it's out of London, and it's related to uh, the cost of shipping, uh, primarily bulk goods. Uh, I think they're talking about, you know, grains and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, large commodity related type materials and things like that around the globe. Okay, so here's a picture of the way it's looked in here where it peaked back in 2008 and then it came down and you notice that uh, this, I've got this notation 1986 low of 556. We stayed, we, we never went below the 1986 low until February 2015, okay? And then we rallied and then we shattered and came down to that low in 2016 
that hasn't been equaled or taken out. We went into a rally phase just like the stock market actually since 2016 and came came on up here and we peaked in this counter trend move in July 2018. And now we've broken down out of this trend line. And where are we sitting? We're sitting at 649 and we're actually still sitting below the low of the financial crisis of 663. OK, I find that pretty interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see, do we hold here or do we continue to sell off and break down further? But this, again, since we were talking about Dow Transports, I thought, why don't we just take a look at the Baltic Dry Index and see where we're at? I did put a post about this on my website about two weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, so I talked about the Baltic Dry Index. All right, that's it for this weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, please give the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to find out more about what's going on, you can head on over to my website over here at johenches.net. And you can get there by johenches.net or you can get there by beyondthechart.com. Right there. Okay, and uh, free market update videos that come out every Monday and Thursday. I've changed that Monday and Thursday. Or check out the membership that we've got for the insider members. All right, that's it for this weekend, everyone. Have a great uh, rest of the weekend and a great week.